How's it going? I'm Anthony Todd. Today I'm going to show you how to find the minimum the minimum velocity with friction on a bank curve. An object has to go before it actually starts to slide down. So the question is how slow can an object go on a bank curve with friction um, before it actually starts to slide down the ramp? Okay. So the first thing we need to look at is, well, look at our free body diagram. Kind of I've kind of drawn one right here but we have a weight pulling down. We know weight is actually just equal to mg. The car does have a normal force, okay? And in this situation, there's actually friction, okay? But as the car wants to, if the car is gonna slide down the ramp per se, what's the minimum velocity? The friction's actually gonna be pulling the car up the ramp. So that's the force of friction pulling up the ramp. Now, with that being said, that means there's a vector component, the force of friction in the y direction, and there's also a force of friction in the x direction. Okay, you can also do the same thing for the normal force. There's a normal force in the x, and there's a normal force in the y. Okay, so here, if this angle is theta, that means this angle here is theta, and that this angle up here is theta. So this is kind of like a right triangle. I hope you can see that right there. Here's my right triangle for my normal forces. Okay, so we now, we can actually uh, solve for these. So the normal force in the x direction is going to be in sine of theta because I have my opposite, this is in the x direction up here, this is the side I want, and this is my angle here. So I have, this n is my hypotenuse, so I have n sine theta. The y direction will be in cosine of theta. All right, and the force of friction we now know is mu times your normal force. But the components of that, the force of friction in the x direction and the force of friction in the y direction, okay, um, they will be this. Um, the force of friction in the x direction will be u in cosine theta and this will be mu in sine of theta. Again, trying to find this y, you have um, your hypotenuse and your opposite, hence that's, that's why it's sine. And you're trying to find this side, that's my adjacent. This is my angle, so I have a hypotenuse and adjacent, that's why that's cosine. Okay, now the first thing we need to do is kind of look at some directional components. We need to kind of define it for our vectors. And we're we'll kind of do it very similar to the last problems we've done. I'm gonna say anything going to the left is negative, anything going to the right of this ramp is gonna be positive. Anything going up is positive. Anything going down the ramp is negative, okay? So kind of a typical coordinate system here. So with that being said, once you kind of figure this out, if you can understand these two vectors and or these two uh, friction and these normal force components, you can break this problem down into pieces. So let's now let's solve for the x-direction force. Now we know all the forces in the x-direction must equal our centripetal force because the optic is still going around a corner. And remember, it's going towards the center, like we said, this acceleration or this centripetal force, remember it's a false force, is going to be negative. So negative MAC. And we know that all the forces in the x direction must equal negative MV squared over R because the acceleration around a circle is V squared over R, where this V sub T is your tangential velocity. So how fast is this object going tangent to its circular path? Now let's look at our forces here. Now we notice we have a normal force in the x direction and it's going towards the negative side and we know what that is. So we have negative n sine of theta. We also have here. Now this frictional component is kind of interesting. Uh, even though the car uh, is wanting to slide down the ramp per se, the frictional component is pulling the opposite direction of its motion. So it's actually pulling it up the ramp so the force in the x will be positive mu in cosine of theta. And so those are really the only two forces that we have in the x direction. And they will be equal to mv squared over r. And then what's interesting is we can, um, oops, negative. Uh, we're going to change the signs and I'm going to factor out an n. So again, this is negative. So this is going to be positive, negative, positive whenever I do this. So factoring out an n gives me n sine of theta minus mu cosine theta equals mv squared over r. Okay, so now we have that. 
that's good to go. So we really can't really go any further with this. So let's just go to the Y direction now. So let's look at the Y direction. So this was my X direction. Let's look at all the forces in the Y direction. Okay, now the Y direction, again, we don't want the car to slide down. So how fast must it go before it starts to slow down? Okay, so what this means is all the forces in the Y direction, we want them to equal zero. We want the car to be in equilibrium, per se. Now we look back at our coordinate system, we have a normal force in the y direction. Remember, that's positive. So we're going to have positive in cosine of theta, that's my y. And I'm going to minus my weight, which is mg, because it's pulling down. And I also have this frictional component, okay? But this frictional component isn't pulling the car down the ramp per se. Remember, the car is trying to slide down. This frictional component in the y direction is actually going to pull the car up as well. That's kind of the trick there. That's going to be the coefficient times my normal force times my sine of theta equals zero. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this mg over and I'm going to solve for n. This actually gives me this. n is equal to cosine theta plus mu sine theta equals mg. So what I did was I moved this over, it became positive, and I factored out an n. And so my normal force is actually simply mg divided by cosine theta plus mu sine of theta. And that's my normal force, okay? So now I have n, and now I'm going to do some substitution here. I'm going to take my normal force that I found in the y, I'm going to plug it in right there. So this is going to go right in there. And this is actually going to give me this. So this is kind of like trying to be nice and neat here. So now I'm going to have this. mg cosine theta plus mu sine of theta multiplied by sine of theta minus mu cosine theta, right? equals mv squared over r. And just simplifying this out, it's going to give me this. mg sine of theta minus mg mu cosine theta divided by cosine theta plus mu sine of theta equals mv squared over r. Notice when you do this, the masses cancel out, as your mass always should cancel out in almost, almost every single Newtonian physics uh, equation. And now do we see if we have anything else we can cancel out? No, we do not. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply this R. So there's going to be an R component on top. And I'm actually going to go ahead and factor that out. So when you do this, you're going to get this. So this R is going to be multiplied by this and this. So notice they also have a G. So I'm going to factor out a G R from both of these. And that's going to be sine theta minus mu cosine theta divided by cosine theta plus mu sine of theta equals v squared. All right. So and now I'm going to solve for it. So take the square root of that. So the square root of g r times sine of theta minus mu cosine of theta divided by cosine theta plus mu sine of theta will equal the velocity, we'll call this min. So this is the minimum velocity. This car must go around this bank corner in order for it to actually slide down the ramp. Okay, so if you uh, this video helped, please give me a thumbs up and a like, and please subscribe for more physics content. If you're checking out um, more bank curve problems, please check out my other two videos for a frictionless bank curve and how fast must a car be going um, before it actually slides up a bank curve. So I, I, I do both of those videos as well. So thank you all. I hope you all have a great day, and uh, thanks for watching.